Okay, so first of all, let us look at these uh, the definitions of osmosis. So when we talk about osmosis, osmosis is defined as a net movement, correct or not? Okay, we always say net movement because we do know that the particle in this case is a water molecule. Always remember for osmosis, the word water molecule, not water. Are you clear? It's the movement of water molecule, but we have to put in the net movement. Why? Because we do know that all particles, they do not know which direction they should go. Okay, it's all based on the random movements of the water molecule. So this random movement of water molecule, the net movement, you can see that it always from a regions of high water potential to a regions of lower water potential through a partially permeable membrane or selectively permeable membrane. So okay, either you put the word partially or selectively. Okay, so in this case, uh, or in these definitions, we have few terms that we need to know. First, as I said that yesterday, we have learned about this net movement. Correct or not? Means that it's not always one single direction, but it's the effect of both directions. Okay, from high to low, from low to high, but we get the net. So it means that you positive minor, uh, you take any positive value, another one negative value. So we sum up the effect, we will get the overall uh, effects. Okay, which we term it as a net movement. So from regions of, now let's highlight the words, water molecule. The movement here is not the water. So what's, mean, what's different between water and water molecule? So always, always remember, the movement in the osmosis is the water molecule. Means water molecule, molecule by molecule, they move. It's not water. The movement of water, basically what? You pour the water from the high regions, then water actually move down. And that is the movement of water. Are you clear? You put a slope there and then you pour the water. Yeah, that is the water. But in our context right, uh, for the osmosis, it's the water molecule, the H2O is the one that move from the regions to another regions due to the random movement. Okay, so this random movement will fall right, uh, from a regions to another regions down this what we call the water potential gradient. Okay, so what's mean water potential? I'm going to explain this later. Okay, and through this selectively permeable membrane or partially permeable membrane. So when you have to define, if a question asks you to define, always remember net movement is the mass, water molecule is the mass, okay? Then you have to put it in contact water potential and osmosis won't take place if there is no selectively permeable membrane. So that's why these four items must be there. So water potential, you can say either from high to low water potential, or we can say that down the water potential gradient. So what is mean by water potential? When you look at the word water potential, water potential is defined as the tendency of water molecule to move from one region to another. So or in layman term, how free? What is the freedom of water molecule? to move, okay? So before we proceed to talk about the water potential, we need to look at a molecule of water and how the interaction of the water and also water molecule with the dissolved solute. And we need to understand what is meant by this solution. Basically, how a particle solubilize in water. Uh, this particle must be hydrophilic particle. Okay. Let us look at okay. Let us look at this uh, water molecule H two O. So if you look at this water molecule, okay, the the shape of water molecule is V shape, right? V shape water molecule. So with two H and one O. So you can see that this is the H. Okay, I'll draw it this way first. And connected with one O. Okay, V shape. Can you see that V shape? Okay, so it's a covalence molecule. So it means that it share the valence electrons. So by right, hydrogen atoms share one electron with uh, oxygen atom. And oxygen atom also share one electron initially with water, uh, with hydrogen atom. So it means that now all of them achieve what we call the stable 
electro uh, configurations here. Okay, the outermost uh, shell will have either two electrons or eight electrons. Okay, so they are stable, the molecule. But because if you compare H and O, O is more electronegative. So what's been electronegative? So it means that they tend to attract, because you try to imagine uh, hydrogen atom, only one, uh, what we call proton, but oxygen, right? oxygen, eight proton. So it means that more proton attraction force will be higher. You're going to attract this pair of electron move nearer to oxygen atom. So towards the end, you can see that now the hydrogens, hydrogens atom, the oxygen atom, and this pair of electrons actually now nearer to the oxygen molecule. So now, if you look at this, if I separate them to, okay, this is hydrogen, hydrogen, and then this is the oxygen. You will realize that now hydrogen seems like, hey, I, do, I, I share the electron, but at the end, electron actually further away from me. So it means the hydrogen atom seems like lose the electron, partially correct? lose the electron, but it's not overall. If you lose the electron overall or, or completely, it become ions. In this case, they are not ions. Can you see that? It just seems like electron is not nearer to the hydrogen atom. So hydrogen atom now seems like lose partially the electrons. Therefore, here they are slightly charged. So they are charged positive. So delta positive, a slight charge only. Same goes to the another hydrogen atom, delta positive. Delta here means slight, a very, very slight uh, charge in this case. How about the oxygen atom? Oxygen atom since I gain two electrons, right? So two delta negative. So in the in term, in term of this structure, can you see that the upper part here is a slightly charged positively, a eh? The bottom region here is slightly charged negative. So this kind of molecule, we term them as the polar molecule. But if you look at the overall structure, they are neutral. Can you see that? Eh? They are neutral. Eh? They are not charged. Are you clear? So they are not charged. Very, very important. So first thing, understand the concept of polar. Okay, now second, we need to understand what is meant by soluble. Or solubility or water soluble in this case. Now, let us look at the sodium chloride ions. Okay, sodium chloride ions, yeah? Understand the concept here. So if I take a cube of sodium chloride, Okay, they are arranged in their crystal lattice in the solid form. Kind of in a solid form. Okay, I take a cube of the sugar or a cube of the sodium chloride. So these sodium chlorides, they are in their crystal lattice form. So what's mean crystal lattice? So you can see that sodium chloride, sodium chloride, sodium chloride, sodium ions, chloride. So they arrange it in very, very, very nice order. Can you see that? So in this case, you see many million, thousand million, or many, many, okay, of sodium chloride actually arranged in their crystal lattice. And the size is large enough, okay, to be uh to be able for us to view it by using a naked eye. Are you clear? We get an idea. So this is what we call as a solid form. Are you clear? So they are in their solid crystal lattice form. They arrange in a very nice crystal lattice form. But when you place them into a beaker of water, initially we still can see a cube, but let's say after 10 minutes, it's something like disappear already. So are they dis uh, do they disappear? No, the answer is not. They are not disappear, but they ionize. So basically, in the aqueous form, sorry, okay, in the solid form, NaCl, now dissociate into the Na plus and Cl minus, correct or not? So 
when they dissociate, they turn into the ion form. Can you see that? They turn into solutions, what we call the ionized form. So when ionized form, they are so small, so our naked eye won't be able to pick them up. Are you clear? Okay, so what is the reason to cause them to dissociate in the water, in a beaker of water? Then we have to look at the interaction between the sodium chloride with the water molecule. Okay, so in this case, you have to understand now NaCl in the solid form dissociate into the ions where it's an aqueous form and aqueous form. Are you clear? The sodium chloride. Okay, so in aqueous solutions, what actually happened? Now, look at this. I take the sodium first. So this is a sodium ions, Na+. Okay? Now, what will happen here is, what happened here is, this sodium ions will be surrounded by water molecule. Now, how water molecule can surround them? You can see that sodium ions, they are positively charged, right? And water molecule, because they have this dipole, Okay, we call it dipole. So what is in dipole? One pole, okay, it's like south pole and north pole, right? So in this case, can you see that the upper part is delta positive, slightly charged positive. Bottom part is slightly charged negative. So what will happen here is the negatively charged O will face our molecule. Let's face one, face our sodium ion. And then hydrogen will be awake. Can you see that? And they form the interaction. Why they form the interaction? Because O is delta negative. Na plus is positively charged. So they can form the interaction. Can you see that? The dipole, the A, you can see that? They form the interaction. When this interaction is established, so we say that now solubilization or this solution take place. Means solubilization ready for sodium ions. How about chloride ion? Okay, how about chloride ions? So chloride ions, same thing. No, but chloride ion is negatively charged, correct not? So it means that H is a delta positive. So H will surround. You, A. Can you see that? The H will surrounding the chloride ions by forming the bond, okay? The interactions here, which we call it as interaction. So this kind of interaction, we give them a special name here because it involves the hydrogen atom. So we name this bond as hydrogen bond. Are you clear? These are hydrogen bonds, okay? The interaction. So hydrogen bond is an extra bond here, okay? Not the van der Waals that we, we learned before, okay? Uh, or you guys have learned before in a high school or the, the, this um, hydrophobic interaction only, but they also have this called hydrogen bond. So this hydrogen bond actually is the ones that cause the water molecule to surround the chloride ions. And again, this solution take place. Are you clear? This solution take place. Okay? So basically, those particles with the charge, generally, I don't say 100%, those particles with the charge, as well as the polar molecule, they will be able to interact the water, with water molecule in aqueous form. Are you clear? Okay? So what is the effect of the solubility here? Can you see that? When we talk about the water potential, yeah, when we talk about water potential, means that how random or how free, yeah, I put an inverted comma here, okay, don't write how free, I mean, in the exam, okay, but how random the water molecule can move, it depends on the interaction with the solute, correct or not? You try to imagine that. You try to imagine that, okay? Water molecule as yourself, okay? 
your water molecule as yourself. So at this moment, you're free to move around in your house. Free, right? Let's say, for example, no COVID. Okay, you're free to go to, okay, for example, to the campus to study. You're free to go to the library. You're free to go to any places you want. Okay? But you try to imagine that after 10 years, you get married, you have the kids. So you have a burden, you have something, a responsibility. In this case, you have your family, you have your kids, you have your work. So can you say that, oh, today I want to fly to Korea. Today I want to fly to Australia. Is it possible? No, because your family, your kids, your work, your responsibility actually reduce how random you can move now. So same goes to water molecule. If I have a pure water, a water, which is, let's say, for example, distilled water. So in this beaker of the distilled water, you can see that nothing, no solid at all. So water molecules, actually, they are freely moved. Can not? They have the maximum, right? In this case, they are no. Can you see that? No solid at all. So therefore, this water molecule, they are fully free or fully random move. So in this case, so water potential is denoted by this symbol C. So water potential equal to zero. The unit is either kilopascal, megapascal. So in this case, can you see that? Water molecule, they are freely move. So conventionally, the maximum, you cannot give a, a high value, right? Positive value. Why? If you get a positive value, how high is high? So conventionally, for distilled water, pure water, water potential always equal to zero kilopascal where there is no solute at all. Are you clear? Okay. But when you add in the solute, now, let's say uh, 0 0.2, okay, uh, molar uh, glucose solutions or sucrose solution, let's say, for example. So we know that sucrose, they are water soluble, right? Your, uh, your sugar, water soluble. So what will happen here is, now, when I add in the sugar or sucrose, so you can see that this is my sucrose molecule, sucrose molecule, sucrose molecule. I just draw some of them. And my water molecule now surrounding, correct or not, my sucrose molecule, forming this hydrogen bond or interaction. Now, don't doubt we still have some free one, free moving one. Are you clear? But you cannot see that now decrease the tendency already, correct not? When you add the solid in, you agree, decrease the tendency, decrease the how random a water molecule can move. So when I say decrease, so water potential now is reduced, so become negative. So for example, let's say, okay, water potential. equal to negative four kilopascal, okay? Negative four kilopascal, okay? If I further add more solute in, let's say 0 0.8 molar sucrose, okay? 0 0.8 molar sucrose, then what you can see that actually, when I have more solute, let's say for example, you have more work to do, definitely you are less free to move, right? If let's say you do work, you have so many work, you may choose, oh, I can't go to the cafe to eat, right? Okay, I can't go for my gym already. Why? Because more work. Today, I have more work. Okay, let's say for example, I have so many particles now. So if I increase the particle, it means that you need more water molecule to surround. Okay, you need more water molecule to surround the sucrose molecule here. So therefore, further decreases the water potential. So in this case, we say that more negative compared to the 0 0.2 molar sucrose solutions. So therefore, water potential, for example, in this case, let's say negative 10 kilopascal, for example. Are you clear so far? Okay. Huh? So in general, you can see that this is a dilute solution. So dilute solutions, because they have less particle, less interactions, so more free for water molecule to move, therefore water potential is high. Are you clear? For concentrated solution, so more 
particles. So when you have more particles per volume, definitely means that you have more interactions. So reduce the random, how random, or the reduce the tendency for water molecule to move. So therefore, water potential is low. Are you clear? So it doesn't care, it doesn't care how much water molecule there. As long as the water potential is high, then another one, water potential is low, you can see that that is a net movement. So now I prepare these two, okay? Different solutions already. Then I pour them into this special uh, container where we have the membrane. Now, if there is no membrane, there is no osmosis. Always, always remember, you must have the membrane, okay? If without the membrane, is a diffusion. Are you clear? Okay. Huh? So what we're going to do here is so I put in this selectively permeable membrane. Okay. Sorry. Here, I put this selectively permeable membrane. Okay, so this part I have, okay, compartment A, compartment B. Compartment A is 0 0.2 molar sucrose, compartment B 0 0.8 molar sucrose. Okay, so 0 0.2 molar, so particle, eh, sucrose molecule cannot pass through, they are large, too large to pass through. Okay, so here 0 0.8, so 1, 2, So it means that more water molecules, can I see that? So compartment A water potential will be high. Compartment B water potential is low. So what is the net movement? So net movement will be from compartment A to compartment B, correct or not? Because high water potential to low water potential, right? So how it just explain? So we always say that there is a net movement. Of now be careful, must write water molecule, not water. From where to where? From A to B. By what process? By osmosis. Okay, across what? Across selectively permeable membrane or just membrane. Okay, down the uh, down the water potential gradient. So four items or elements that always we want to put in. So from where to where? By what process? Okay, across what? And down the water potential gradients. Always remember, guys, the word we use here is water potential gradient, not concentration gradient, because you have to understand that concentration. What is the concentration of water? Cannot. How you know what is the concentration of water? Help me, lah. Okay, zero concentration. Then both also zero. What? Right. Okay. So in this case, we are block looking into how random water molecule can move. So the correct word or correct term to be used here is water potential. Are you clear? Okay. Uh, any more questions so far? So a solution contain high number of random moving water molecule. Means that it must be a dilute solution. Lah. So free to move basically means that less work. Correct or not? So it has a higher water potential than a solution contain only a low number of random moving water molecule. Means that's too much work. You cannot go to the gym. You cannot go to shopping. You cannot do anything. So because you are born, okay? So this kind of interactions we call it as the hydrophilic interaction. If involved the hydrogen atom, then we term it as the hydrogen bond to be more precise. So conventionally highlight when talk about the pure water, then you will have a zero water potential. But again, when answer the question, don't put a zero. You can put any uh, unit. You must have the unit, okay? Zero watt, zero kilo pascal or mega pascal or even just pascal is okay. You must have the units, okay? Even though we term it zero water potential, 
In fact, when you write it, it has a zero kilopascal or zero megapascal. So the process will continue to move, okay, the net movements always from the region of high water potential to the region of lower water potential until they reach the dynamic equilibrium where the water potential in these two regions are equal and there will have no net movement of water molecule. Are you clear? So highlights the word or underline the word net. Okay, so no net movement. So you can see that, guys, in this diagram. So we have the selectively permeable membrane where we are going to have the lower concentration of solute compared to the higher concentrations of the solute. Okay, the sugar here. So which part have the higher water potential? This one, water potential is high. So this one, water potential is low. So that is a net movement, can you see, at the end of the water molecule across this selectively permeable membrane. And this diagram also show you guys what is mean by the solubility. Can you see that? My sugar molecule. So you can see the water molecule actually form the hydrogen bonds with their solutes, okay, the, the, the sugar. Therefore, sugar cannot pass through, yeah, okay? But water molecule can. Do you understand the diagram here? We can see that because the direction always, in this case, from left to right, right? But you cannot ignore the effect for some water molecule actually move from right to left. But overall, three move in a positive and one move in a negative way. So therefore, overall effect still positive. Okay, until you have the same concentration of sugar, or we say that they have the same water potential. Okay, yeah. so what we learn actually, okay, to talking about the water potential is just a general. Okay, it's a general. Okay, so what are the effects or what are the factors actually affect the water potential? Water potential is an overall effect. So what are the factors actually affecting our water potential? So we have two. One is a solid potential and another one is the pressure potential. So generally, water potential actually equal to the solid potential plus the pressure potential. Are you clear? Okay, it's the effects of the solute's potential plus the, eh, the effects from the pressure potential. Then the interplay between these two factors will contribute to the final or overall water potential. Are you clear? So when you discuss everything, because the osmosis actually depends. Sorry, my mistake. So osmosis always depends on the water potential. Water potential depends on these two, okay? Solid potential and also pressure potential, okay? So now let us look at, we cannot study both together. We cannot study both of them together. So it, eh, imagine that there is no pressure exerted to the liquids at all. Can you see that? If there's no pressure exerted to my water, I mean, uh, water molecule, so pressure potential equal to zero, then we look at the solid potential only. So what it means by the solid potential? So solid potential always give us a headache, uh, a confusion here because uh, the meaning and also the value will be different, okay? So now, look at this. Solid potential is defined as the potential of attractions towards the water molecule caused by the dissolved solute inside the solution. Get the idea? So the more, okay, the more solutes, we are going to increase the attraction. Are you clear? Okay. Yeah? So the attraction between the solute molecule and water molecule reduces the random movement of water molecule. Okay. But solute potential is always negative as the solute molecule lower the water potential. Now, this part, students always, always confuse. Okay, uh, now, understand the concept here first. I compare between two. One is concentrated solution. Another one is a diluted solution. Okay, or dilute solution. Okay, uh, you compare between these two. So first, what we compare? we compare about the concentrations of the solute. Correct not? So in concentrated of solutions, will be high. Dilute will be low. 
correct or not? Okay. Now, next, we compare about the attraction force. Okay. If concentrated solutions means that they attract more water molecule, right? So it will be higher attraction. Dilute will be lower attraction. In terms of how random water molecule can move, okay, because attraction is high, random will be lower. Can or not? Dilute attraction will be low, right? Not so many particles, right? So therefore, random movement will be high. Okay. Now, how about solid potential? Now, because solid potential, always negative. So therefore, solid potential in this case, if you have concentrated, okay? If you have concentrated solutions, solid potential is low. Diluted solid potential is high. This is the part that students always confuse. Okay, because the definitions and also the value actually opposite. If you understand the definition here, the definition of solid potential is potential of attractions towards water molecule caused by dissolved solute inside the solution. So if I add more solute, it should increase the attraction, eh? increase attractions, right? But why value decrease? Because of the negative. The negative sign we put in, that is the one that caused the value to be lower. Are you clear? Okay, understand? Huh? Again, huh? The, the value is still high. For example, if you look at two solutions, if let's say this is 0 0.2 molar compared to 0 0.8 molar, okay, the attraction here is, is lower, right? Low attraction. Correct not? 0 0.8 will have high attraction. Correct not? Okay. So let's say in this case, we have negative 2 kilopascal. In this case, negative 8 kilopascal. Now, if you look at the value only, ignoring the signs, yeah, attraction actually higher. Correct not? Attraction actually higher. But, when you put in, be careful, attraction is higher, but solid potential, you need to put in negative. When you put in negative, can you see that negative 2 is higher than negative 8? So it means that concentrated solutions will have lower solid potential compared to the dilute because solid potential is always negative. Get the idea or not, guys? Okay, huh? so attraction force here is low, but the value is high. Why? Because of the negative. So objective question always have the, tr uh, the trick here. Okay, students always, okay, students always fall into the trap. Okay, concentrated solution always have lower solute potential. Okay, and dilute solution always have higher solute potential, but interactions, Dilute solutions will have lower attractions. Can you say that higher attractions? Okay, get the idea. Okay. Uh. So in terms of calculations, because here, guys, pressure potential. Can you see that pressure? No pressure exerted, right? We don't give any pressure. So pressure equal to zero megapascal. Solid potential here equal to zero. Solid potential equal to negative 0 0.4. When you add up, water potential equal to zero because pure water, 0 0.1 molar solutions. Then you can see that, uh, guys, the uh, change the diagram, sorry. Uh, can't get the better diagram. So not semi, but selectively permeable membranes. Okay, not se semi, okay, selectively permeable. Then you can see that from zero, negative 0 0.4, so water potential overall will be 0 0.4 mega pascal, okay? Okay, so the next item we're gonna look at this is the pressure potential, okay? So what's pressure potential? So from the words pressure, 
So generally, we can explain it as a pressure exerted on a fluid by its surrounding. Okay. So particularly in plants, okay, in plant cells, we do know that plant cells, they have cell wall. So when the cell contents expand or protoplast expand, it will cause a pressure onto the cellulose cell wall, right? You try to imagine it will continue to expand. Water molecule continue to move in. So when the water molecule continue to move in, what will happen here is the cell cytoplasm expand, or we call it protoplast expand. When the protoplast expand, it's going to exert a turgle pressure to the wall. And the wall is very rigid. When the wall is very rigid, so means what? The wall have to exert back something onto the cytoplasm or the water. So this something actually is known as the pressure potential. So it's an inward pressure. Are you clear? Can you see that the yellow color? It's an inward pressure onto the solution, means the cytoplasm. Are you clear? Okay. We learned in physics before, right? We learned in physics, so the wall. Okay, you imagine that this is the wall. So if you exert the pressure onto the wall, if the wall cannot exert back the same degree of the, uh, the, the force or the pressure, the wall will collapse. Could I not? If you exert this amount of the energy or this amount of the force onto the wall, the wall have to act back the same force so that we have the equilibrium. Are you clear? Okay, so this is called as inward pressure and this inward pressure always have positive value. Always remember, pressure potential always positive. Okay, why positive? Because they increase the water potential. Are you clear? They increase the water potential. So therefore, we term it as, I mean, I mean the, the value must be positive. So they are positive when they are positive when the plant is turgid. When the plant actually exert the pressure onto the cell wall, then they react back. But if the cell is flaccid, means that the cell water molecule move out, right? When the water molecule move out, the cell actually is flaccid. When the cell flaccid, means that the cell membrane or the cytoplasm or protoplast actually didn't act on or didn't exert any pressure onto the cell wall. So therefore, cell wall would repay actually exert back the pressure. Are you clear? You try to imagine I didn't exert any force to the wall, the wall actually stands still. Lah. They won't give back any other pressure. Are you clear? Okay. So if you look at the system here, pure water, okay, without any pressure. Can I see that? Without any pressure. So pressure potential equal to zero, uh, zero. solid potential equal to zero. So overall water potential equal to zero mega Pascal. Okay. And the solutions here, you can see that solid potential is negative one. We always see that solid potential, solid always negative, right? Solid potential always negative. Pressure potential positive. So it cancels out the effect. Can you see that? It cancels out the effect. So the water potential here will equal to zero. So it can reach the dynamic equilibrium. Can you see that? Or in the plant cells, same thing happens. So water potential equal to zero mega Pascal. Okay, so but in animal cell, the pressure potential generated by cell membrane is negligible. You try to imagine that it's, it's okay. If this is the, it's not the wall, but it's just a curtain. Again, if you exert the pressure on this curtain, this curtain actually won't be able to exert back the same pressure. So therefore, this curtain will collapse or it, it will move, right? When you push it, can I see that? So why? Because it cannot exert back the same amount of or same uh, degree of the pressure potential. Okay, uh, so that's why the cell membrane generated, also they have the pressure potential, but you can ne uh, neglect this pressure potential. Okay, so. Now we look at this, okay? Animal cells in terms of the osmosis, we prefer to use a red blood cell. Okay, so we use the red blood cells because they got the pigment, the red color pigment, then we can see the effects. Okay, uh? so what we're going to do here is we have three solutions. Okay, three solutions. Solution one, solution two, and solutions number three. Okay, solutions one. 
Okay, solution once in this process, in this case, you can see that, let's say I use the, this, okay, so the water potential of the solution is high, higher than the water potential of the salts. Okay, for example, distilled water. Okay, for example, distilled water. Second, here, water potential, they are equal. Okay, means that the water potential of the solution is equal to water potential of the red blood cell. Water potential of the solution equal to the water potential of the red blood cell, or cytoplasm red blood cells. Okay, so normally we take about uh, 0 0.5 molar sucrose, normally, or 0.9% saline. Okay, and the third ones where we have the water potential of the solution lower than the uh, red blood cells. So let's say, for example, I take uh, 1.5 molar sucrose. Okay. As my example. So what will happen here is if I place my red blood cell inside. Okay. So what will happen if I enlarge it? You can see that, guys. This is a red blood cell. So water potential of the red blood cell, because red blood cell contain the cytoplasm, got solid inside, right? So water potential is low. Okay, for red blood cell. How about solution? Solution, water potential is high because it's still water. So there will be a net movement of the water molecule into the red blood cell. Can they achieve the dynamic equilibrium? Can they achieve dynamic equilibrium? Let's say, for example, water potential inside the cells is negative 5 kilopascal. Solutions, let's distill water, right? So zero kilopascal. So means that outside never have any solute. We don't add any solute. So water molecule will continue to enter into red blood cell until the red blood cell lies. So we can see that lysis of the cell take place at the end. You can't achieve dynamic equilibrium at all because no chance. Okay, why? The cell membrane is very fragile. They won't be able, the, the pressure potential exerted by the membrane is negligible. Are you clear? So we can actually analog it with what? The balloon. You try to imagine, you can blow the balloon. Blow and blow and blow. Why are you going to continue to blow? Why you don't want to stop? Because I am the distilled water. My water potential is always higher than the red blood cell. So continue to blow until they lies. Can you see that? Okay, or burst. Okay, huh? So in this case, there is a net movement, okay? Now, how about this case number two? Case number two, because the water potentials are equal, so means that the rate of water molecule movement into the cells and out of the cells will be the same, same rate. Can you see that? So there is no net movement because they're already in, what we call this a dynamic equilibrium stage already. Are you clear? Yeah. So this one is a net movement. Uh? Net movement. I show one day, one direction is a net movement. Okay. And then the last one, you can see that. Okay. Eh? So water potential inside the cells or red blood cell equal to negative five kilopascal. But water potential of the solution let's say equal to negative 10 kilopascal. So there is a net movement of water molecule out of the red blood cells. So crenations take place, okay? So in this case, we call it crenation. Basically means that the cell shrinks, okay? So this is the effect of the solutions, okay? Or the osmosis onto the animal cells where we don't have the cell wall. Get the idea? So far, okay or not? So in this case, we can't achieve dynamic equilibrium. Okay. No, no dynamic equilibrium. 
This one, yes, because already in a dynamic equilibrium. Last one, yes, we can achieve the dynamic equilibrium until all the water move out, then no choice. Lah. Are you clear? Okay, uh, so if possible, it's possible. But the first case, impossible to achieve the dynamic equilibrium. Okay? So now, like, have you taken the photo you need? Okay, I'll stop for okay, 10 seconds. Okay, so now next. We look at the plant cells. So first case, yes, I put them into a distilled water. Okay, distilled water compared to the plant cells. Now, not the same scale, uh, definitely. Okay, case number two. So plant cells. So I place it in the sucrose solution. So let's say 0 0.5 molar sucrose solution. Okay, yeah. and number three. Okay, so I place it into a solution. So let's say for example, 1.5 molar sucrose solution. Then we leave it until we see the effect. Okay, we leave it until we see the effects. So we look at the first case. There, yeah. so this is the spun cell. With the cell wall. Okay, so distilled water. So in this case, water potential of the cell is negative, let's say a five kilopascal. Okay, then water potential of the distilled water, no need to say, is zero kilopascal. So can you see that high water potential, low water potential, there is a net movement of water molecule? Fair enough. Okay, there's net movement of water molecule. But can they achieve dynamic equilibrium or not? The question here, can they achieve dynamic equilibrium? Okay, let us look at it, whether it's uh, possible or not for us to achieve the dynamic equilibrium, okay, in plant cells. Now, we do know that we don't add any solutes. Okay, distilled water remain as distilled water. So this zero kilopascal, we won't be able to change them at all. Zero kilopascal, we don't be able to, 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 to make it lower. And in the plant cells, negative five kilopascal is because of the solutes, right? You get ions, you get a neutron inside the plant cells. So it means that you won't be able to actually remove this negative. Can I see that? Because of the solute potential. So what will happen here is, in the plant cells, when water molecule continue to enter into the plant cells, what will happen here is, this water molecule make the plant cells now become turgid. Okay, so first step, make the plant, a plant cell become turgid. So when the plant cell become turgid, means that they are going to exert turgid pressure onto the cell wall. Are you clear? Okay. And mm, cell wall will reply back. So, okay, you press on the cell wall, cell wall are going to exert back. So cell wall in this case, going to exert the pressure potential. So when you exert this pressure potential, this pressure potential always positive because you're going to increase the water potential. So what will happen here is, you can see that now inside the cell. Okay, solid potential equal to negative five kilopascal. But a pressure potential, I put at back as positive five kilopascal. So the overall water potential now becomes zero kilopascal for the plant cells. Okay, 
And we do know that water potential of this still water equal to zero kilopascal as well. Can you see that now they reach the dynamic equilibrium? Okay, because of what? Because of the pressure potential. Right? Because of the pressure potential, therefore the plant cell now achieve the dynamic equilibrium. So it means that the, the, degree, the rate of water molecule enter into the cell and leave the cell will be the same. So that's why the cell won't burst. Why? Because of the cell wall exert the pressure potential, resist the additional entry of the water molecule. So the plant cell won't burst, but the animal cell will burst due to without the cell wall. Understand the concept here? Okay, so they managed to achieve the dynamic equilibrium even though we place them into the distilled water. So the cell will expand in length until they reach a, a certain size. And then when they achieve the water potential equal to zero already, then we can see that dynamic equilibrium is rich. Okay, so case number two. Okay, case number two, very simple because 0 0.5 molar sucrose solutions, as, assuming that water potential of this, okay, of the solutions equal to the water potential of the cytoplasm, then you can see that there is no net movements of the water molecule. Okay, and the third case, 1.5 molar sucrose solutions, definitely in this case, we're going to see water potential of the solution is lower than the water potential of the cytoplasm. So therefore, that is a net movement of water molecule out of the cells. Okay, so the, the plant cells at the end will experience what we call the plasmolysis. Okay, so plasmolysis takes place in three stages. Stage one is about right, the moment at a particular point where the water molecule, okay, uh, the plasmolysis start to take place, we call it as the incipient plasmolysis. Okay, it's about to take place. So if you look at the cell, the cell membrane still attached. Okay. Still membrane, still membrane still attached to the cell wall, but there is no pressure exerted to the cell wall. Are you clear? At that moment, can you see that the cell plasma membrane still they, uh, attached to the membrane, but at this moment, there is no pressure exerted to the cell wall, so cell wall would exert back the pressure potential. So at this moment, you can see that the pressure potential already equal to zero kilopascal, that, that particular moment. Okay. I mean, uh, it's the point where plasmolysis is about to take place. Okay. Then it followed by what we call as the evidence plasmolysis. So it's a means that meets Okay, or in the midst of the process. So you can see that the cell, I shouldn't draw it a little uh, bigger, then never mind. Okay, I just draw it. So you can see that the plasma membrane, part of the plasma membrane actually already detached. Okay, from the uh, cell wall. Are you clear? Okay, and it will end, up, end with what we call the final plasmolysis where okay this place this part you can see that you you may result it may result in the totally okay the cyto right, the, the cell membrane totally detached from the cell wall okay it may form something like this oh, totally don't confuse guys Can you see that? So red color represents the cell membrane. So the one that you need to know actually is only this one. Incipient plasmolysis means that the particular point eh, where the plasmolysis is about to 
take place. Are you clear? Okay, uh, because initially, you, you can imagine that initially they are tergic. When they are tergic, basically means that pressure potential equal to plus 5 kilopascal. So plus 5. And then for fully tergic cells, you take these cells, put them into the sucrose solution, a high concentrated sucrose solution. What will happen here? When you place it, right? When you place it in the sucrose solution, what will happen? The water molecules start to move out, right? So it from 5 kilopascal, become 4 kilopascal, 4, 3, 2, 1. But at this moment, it's not incipient plasmolysis yet. Are you clear? 5, okay, 4, 3 kilopascal, 2 kilopascal, 1 kilopascal, okay? And when in the moment it step into the 0 kilopascal, then we know that incipient plasmolysis take place already. It's about, okay, at this moment, 0 kilopascal, and it will continue. This one also, where the pressure potential equal to 0 kilopascal, and same here, the pressure potential equal to 0 kilopascal. Why? Because the membranes no longer, or the protoplasts no longer exert the turgor pressure to the cell wall. Understand the concept? You can take a photo for this part. So in this diagram, okay, in terms of plant cells, in terms of natural, okay, in terms of natural, okay, uh, the maximum water potential that we can achieve is zero. Because it depends, totally depends how much the turgor pressure exerted onto the cell wall. Are you clear? Okay, so the maximum we can have is zero. But can we get a positive value for water potential or not? Yes or no? Yeah, from you guys, can you guys tell me whether is it possible to get the positive water potential or not? It means overall here become positive, yes or no? Yeah, put your answer in the Zoom chat there. Is it possible to increase until you get positive for the water potential? Okay, I have some say no, some say yes. Yeah, how are the rest of you guys? Yes or no? No answer, don't know. Okay, so in nature, no. Means that whatever happened in the plant cell, no. But if we do it in the, I mean, the lab system, the answer is yes. Now, it depends on the how much pressure we actually exert it. How much pressure we exert it. So if the pressure that we exert actually more than the solute potential, let's say we increase from positive one to positive two, to positive three, to positive four, then you can see that now water molecule, okay, if here, okay, uh, let me show you guys. So we exert the pressure here. So means that pressure potential now increase. Let's say pressure potential equal to 5 kilopascal. And the solute potential, let's say, equal to negative 2 kilopascal. So overall water potential, can you see that? Oh, sorry. The overall water potential now will equal to 3 kilopascal. Okay, here with the solute. If this part, I put a distilled water, without any pressure, then water potential will equal to zero kilopascal. Now you can see that water molecule move because here high water potential, this part low water potential, the net movement of water molecule now from the, okay, the place with more solute to no solute. And this kind of osmosis is termed as reverse osmosis. Have you heard about the RO water? This is how we actually can make it. So, we can use, okay, the waste water, okay, the waste water. And then we exert the pressure here, put a clean water, then water molecule actually will be able to, okay, can you see that water molecule? Now we'll be able to move from the waste water regions to the clean water region, and this water can be reused. This is how the RO water is processed. Okay, reverse osmosis water, okay? So that is also why we don't use the words hypertonic, hypotonics, and isotonic anymore in A level. Because hypertonic, 
isotonics or hypotonics, this term actually refer to the concentration. Means that we ignore the effects of the pressure potential, which is not true because in the plant cells, we do always have the cell wall, unless you remove the cell wall. As long as cell wall is there, pressure potential is always there. So that's why we do not use the word hyper, hypo, and isotonics. And you shouldn't use these three terms in your, I mean, so when you answer the questions, always, always remember, everything refer to water potential, okay? So let's look at this. Uh, we have done this part already. So a quick one. So describe and explain the effect. So we said describe. Describe basically means that you tell me the directions. Explain basically means tell me why. Okay. So A. Okay. So hemolysis take place. We say that water potential of surrounding solution is higher than the water potential of the red blood cell. Right, cytoplasm. Therefore, there is a net movement of water molecule from the surrounding solution into the red blood cell cytoplasm by osmosis across selectively permeable membrane down the water potential gradients. And the excessive entry of water molecule causes hemolysis, the lysis, eh, the lysis of the red blood cell. Be careful, hemolysis only can be used for red blood cell. Other kind of cells just tell me as lysis. Okay, B, can you see that in and out had the same rate? So therefore, water potential of the surrounding solution is equal to the water potential of the cytoplasm. So there's no net movement of water molecule into or out of the red blood cells by osmosis. Okay. C, you can see that there's a net movement of the water molecule out of the cells, right? So cremation actually take place. Okay. So water potential of the surrounding solution is lower compared to the water potential of the red blood cell cytoplasm. So again, there is a net movement of water molecule from the red blood cell cytoplasm to the surrounding by the process of osmosis across what? Selectively permeable membrane or partially a permeable membrane down the water, molecule, uh, water potential gradient. So the, loose, uh, the loss of the water molecule causes cremations in red blood cells. Okay. Uh? Don't worry. I mean, you have no time to copy down because uh, when I upload the video, so you can always get the answer. Now, how about the plant cells? Okay, we explain, always explain in terms of the water potential. Okay, so we do know the water potential of the surrounding solution is higher than the water potential in the plant cells. So therefore, again, we have the net movement. So again, the water molecule from surrounding into the plant cell cytoplasm, again, by osmosis across selectively permeable membrane down the water potential gradient. And the excessive entry of water molecule cause the plant cell to be turgid. It won't lie because of the pressure potential okay, exerted by the cell wall. Okay, so water potential of the surrounding solution is equal in this case. So therefore, water molecule in and out the same. So again, no net movement of water molecule into or out of the plant cell cytoplasm by osmosis. Okay, now C. So water potential of surrounding solution is lower than the water potential of red blood cells. Eh? Why red blood cells? Should be plant cells, sorry. Okay, plant cell cytoplasm. So therefore, there's, eh, there is a net movement of water molecule from... What happened here? My mistake. When copy and paste. Okay, plant cell cytoplasm to the surrounding by osmosis across selective permeable membrane down the water potential gradients. So result in the plasmolysis of the plant cells. And the process of plasmolysis always start with the incipient plasmolysis, where the point at which plasmolysis is about to occur when the plant cell losing the water molecule, followed by evidence plasmolysis and end with final plasmolysis. Okay, so with this, I've done for the osmosis.